Praise the Lord. You can be seated, church. Good morning, church of the living God. So once again, even today, let's just take off. We just want to come to a good understanding of the topic that we treated or we started treating the past Sunday. Because why? We sense that God wants to speak the perfect truth here to us. God wants some light to be shared in our minds, like he's praying through the Apostle Paul in the book of Ephesians. We look at Ephesians chapter 1, beginning from the 16th verse. Verse number 16. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16. It says, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us what we believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principalities listen to this and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head of all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him that filleth all in all so you can see here we are taking it up Paul is praying for the Ephesians, that at least they should come to an understanding that God would grant them a spirit of revelation and a spirit of wisdom in the knowledge of him or in the knowledge of Christ, that the eyes of their understanding should be enlightened. In other words, they should come to a position of illumination. Because we've got to see something here, church. Something that we have not seen before. I pray this prayer for you today. I pray the same prayer for myself. That Lord, can you cause the inner eyes of my understanding to be enlightened in these things that pertain unto your word. Please grant me a spirit of wisdom and understanding and revelation and the knowledge of you. So that I could see things that I've never seen before. Speaking about the believer's authority, church, God wants to open a chapter in our lives. So much so that this morning you will begin to see some things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some things will be revealed. Light will come into your heart, come into your eyes. Like David says in the book of Psalms, the entrance of your word gives light. The entrance of your words gives understanding to an ignorant mind. Or it grants understanding to the simple. I tell you, this morning you shall have understanding. This morning, understanding will flood your mind. The light of God will come and shine inside your hearts. He's praying for the Ephesian church that they should know the riches of the glory of his inheritance and the saints. And 19, what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe? According to the working of his mighty power. Where did he show it? He wrote it in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Verse 20. And not only raised Jesus, but he said he set him on his own right hand in the heavenly places. He set Christ on his own right hand. You'll understand this very soon as we go. 
Just now, hold to the fact that Jesus is at the right hand. He's exalted. He's at the right hand of the Father in heavenly places. Far above yeah. all principality. Yeah. And power. Yeah. And might. Yeah. And dominion. Yeah. And every name that is named. Yeah. Not only in this world but also in that which is to come. And has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Now he continues this prayer in chapter 3. Verse 14, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and on earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, and the depth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him, verse 20, that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. In other words, he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that is working in the believer. God wants us to appreciate the fullness of himself. He wants us to be strengthened with might in the inner man by his spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he wants to do things in our lives exceeding abundantly, more than we can ask or think, according to what he has given us, according to what is at work within us as believers. Because why? Our God can only work according to the work that is already inside you. He works in us effectively. The Bible says he effectually worketh in me. God wants us to see something here. Are you with me, church? Then he says in Ephesians chapter 6, I was recounting those two prayers. I'm just flying here because of time. He says in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. In high places. The Bible says we are battling against these entities. We are fighting against principalities. See, we are fighting against powers. We are fighting against the rulers of the dark ages or the darkness of this world. We are fighting against spiritual wickedness in high places. But remember that Jesus is seated far above at the right hand of the Father in high places. In other words, as we are battling this Entities, we must know that we have authority over them. Say, I have authority. Turning in the macunya. Say, I have authority. Turning in the macunya. Over every power. Say, I have authority. Turning in the macunya. To battle against principalities. We're good singing on our bonge babusi. Against powers. Be man against rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. I tell you, what you are fighting today, you've got authority over them. God has given you authority. God has granted us authority over this spiritual wickedness in high places. And do you know what? This is the property of Every child of God. This authority that I'm talking about is not for a select few or only a select few. It is the property of, of every believer in Christ. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have authority over them. Say I have authority. Say I have authority over them. Say I have authority. In other words, this authority is your property as a child of God. As a believer in Christ. Because as you see here, Paul is speaking to the church at Ephesus. He's speaking to the body of Christ at large. This is not only for Pastor Tulane. This is not only for the evangelists. This is not only for the called out ones. It is property for every child of God. You have authority over them. So you are going to be able to wage a fight here because God has equipped you with something. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 speaks about Blessed be the God and Father of your, our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. In other words, in Christ, all spiritual blessings belong to us. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be God our Father or the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all. Say all. The RSV says Every, in other words, God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. All spiritual blessing, it means the same. He has blessed us. Who are us? Us is the church. Because Paul is speaking to the Ephesian church. God has blessed you with all spiritual blessings. In heavenly places. These blessings, they belong to us. Say they belong to me. Say these blessings, they belong to me. Say these blessings, they belong to me. In other words, it belongs to you. It belongs to your family. It belongs to your children, to your siblings. It belongs to your parents. So long as we are in Christ, the qualification is being in Christ. Jesus. Now we need to know what belongs to us. Listen very well. We need to know what belongs to us. But however, knowledge only is not enough. It will not work for you. It will not do the job. What is needed here is knowledge that is acted upon. Knowledge acted upon. You need to know these things, church. Because authority belongs to all the children of God. But the devil would like to obscure this. He would like to cause you not to see because why? He doesn't want us to enjoy the victory over him. The devil doesn't want you to see this. That's why he's putting a veil. Precious few people know this today. Why? Because once people discover who they are in Christ, what they have or what rightfully belongs to them, the devil will no longer dominate you from that day. But as I say, he doesn't want us to enjoy the victory that we should have over him. Once you know this, the child of God will no longer be dominated by the devil. The child of God will enjoy the reality of what rightfully belongs to him. Tell me, don't you want to enjoy the reality of what rightfully belongs to you? Huh? Don't you want to enjoy all that Christ has given us? The devil is putting a blindfold to that. He doesn't want us to see. And that's why Paul is busy praying for us to be granted the spirit of revelation. The Ephesian church, their eyes, the inner eyes of their, their understanding to be enlightened so that they may know this authority. Because this will cause the church to do the work that Christ has purposed it to do. We will thereby begin to walk the way we are supposed to walk and enjoy the reality of what rightfully belongs to us. You get this from John chapter 8, verse 32. tells us, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. It's knowing the truth and acting on it that makes one free. I will repeat it again. 
It is knowing the truth and acting on it that will make a person completely free. You act on those truths. Knowledge is not enough. That's why Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Many Christians know the truth, but they are not free. Free? Why? Maybe they've not acted. They have not acted on the portion of truth that they now have. Are you with me, church? So what did Jesus say in Luke chapter 10, verse 19? This is what he said. He said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Behold, I give you or I give unto you power. That's a Greek word. You can see that the word power appears twice there. I give you power to tread on serpents and over all the power of the enemy. It appears twice. These are not the same. The words in Greek are not the same. The first word is rightly to be interpreted authority. In other words, Jesus was saying, I give unto you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Behold, I give unto you authority. Say authority. Say authority. Jesus is granting the church or the individual believer authority. Authority to do what? Authority to trample serpents and scorpions. In other words, you have authority. You have authority. You are not going to have authority. You have authority. So long as you are in Christ, you have this authority. As I said, it belongs to each and every one of us, every individual believer in Christ. Well, I just want to give an example. If you can look what kind of authority you are speaking about. Let's take, for instance, a policeman. Because this kind of authority will be best give an example to by the work that a policeman does, he actually acts out authority. I don't know if you are a driver or if you move sometimes around, you can see when you come to a section where the lights are off, you find that a policeman will stand there. And this police man or police lady or woman will be stopping the cars. And this police lady will be doing this. And once she leaves her hand, every car will do what? You find that the cars will stop. No matter how big the cars may be. No matter how huge the vehicle may be or small the car may be. He just lifts his hand, she stops the cars. Now the question is, does she have power to stop the cars? Will this a frail policeman be able to put his hand on the truck or on the car and stop the car like this? The answer is no. She cannot stop even a scooter maybe like that. But she will lift up her hand. Every car will stop. Why? Because she has what? Because she has what? She has authority. Clap hands for the Lord. I didn't know that this class was so brilliant. She has authority. And she's acting on that authority. She stops the cars. She opens for the cars. She directs where the cars should go. And they will go exactly where they are supposed to go. Or she's indicating that they should go. Are you with me? In other words, the policeman's authority was delegated to him. Now, I want to try to explain authority to you. What is authority? Authority is delegated power. Authority is delegated power. Say it. Say authority is delegated power. Say authority is delegated power. I mean, She's acting on power that has been given unto her 
or him she's doing that when the cars are listening to him every authority has been delegated Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might in other words you are strong in the Lord because why he has delegated authority unto you authority is delegated power and listen the value of authority depends on the force behind the user the value of authority depends on the force behind the user in this case like we're giving an example of a policeman all the laws are behind him or are behind her. There are strong state institutions that are behind her as she's lifting that hand. There is a force that is behind her. There is a power that is behind her. There are strong state institutions that are behind her. And sometimes there's the power of a gun behind her. You have to stop. Whether you like it or not, you have to do what? You've got to stop. Now, tell me if you can just go in the middle of the road, you yourself, without any uniform, without any badge, you stand there, you lift your hand, will the truck stop? Will the car stop? Huh? Will they listen to you? If you want to see something else, try to do that. You will see what will happen to you. You will see what will happen to your sorry self. Because why? You don't have the authority. Nothing has been delegated to you to do that. In other words, the value of the authority depends on the force behind the user. Are you with me, church? Always be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Authority was delegated to you. I remember a story of uh, one man of God. He says they were doing some work somewhere. There was a contractor doing some work. And they were trying to test this thing. And this thing was like a balloon. You see those big inflatables. Like the one that you can board and take a ride around. So this thing was inflated and it was big. But as the men were working with it, somehow the moorings, the ropes, they snapped and it snapped loose and it went off. Some people were clever, so much so that as when that happened, they thought fast, they let it go, they left it, they let loose their hands there. But some people didn't lose their grip, they went up with it. And when it was still there, some fell and broke their arms and their legs. They fell into the ground. But some people continued holding on. And Kenneth Hagen says, this thing went higher. It went higher. And now people were screaming on the floor. People were crying. Ladies were crying. Children. And people were falling into their death. Because you know you cannot hold for very long. You get tired in your hand, in your grip. They fell and they Bath. died. Bath. But there's one man who continued holding on. And this thing went up higher than then, well, yeah. it was supposed Ooh. to be. Now they were looking at this man. This man was just only a speck there. Small. Now what had happened, they've called on the ambulances, the paramedics, they were here, the emergency services, and everybody was crying and waiting for the time this man will fall to his death. But in our past, the men were still holding on. People were crying, some were fainting. Now it's close to one and a half hour, the man is still holding on. Two hours, what is happening? The man is just hanging there. And this thing went by itself a little bit further and it came down little by little and they were able to catch hold of it and it was brought low. And now they were talking to the man and asking him, how were you able to hold on all this time? Why didn't you die, fall down to your death? This man said, no, look, I wasn't struggling anyhow when I was there. I wasn't trying to grasp hold of anything when I was up there. All that I did, I took a portion of the rope that was hanging, I was hanging through. I let it round myself. I tied it around myself and I, 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 I fastened a knot. In other words, the rope was holding me, not me holding the rope. And he says, all this while I was just 
looking at the good scenery there. I was having a good look, relaxing, and myself. I was not panicking. Wow. Exactly what the Lord said. He said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. But here are Christians, they are trying to be strong in themselves, doing things by their strength. What can you do with your might? The Bible says we have been given authority. Say, I have authority. Say, I have authority. Say, I have authority. Otherwise, this authority has been delegated to you. You just have to do things as the Lord instructs. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. I think of another example here. One God's general say he was in the bus station waiting for a bus. And here comes this lady. He wants, or she wanted to catch a bus herself. But as this woman came, she was followed by her little puppy dog. And uh, she talked to the dog, hey, uh, uh, can you go back? And the little dog was reacting to the love and she whined and uh, it was busy playing with the pants of the ladies, I mean with the legs of the ladies' pants. And the lady spoke again, hey, go back home. Where now? The little dog playing, eh, eh, eh. But then here is the bus now. The dog was not far away. It was still following her. And the woman saw the problem. She said, get back home. Immediately she said that the little dog took its tail, put it behind it, whined and went speedily back home. And without even thinking, Smith Lucas was shouted, hey, that's how you have to treat the devil. It happens for Jesus Christ. This is how we are supposed to treat the devil. Because we have what? We have authority. People have been speaking nicely to the devil. Hey, stop what you are doing to me. We're now. Satan, I leave my children alone. Devil, you get up and a band. Satan will do this. Huh? Satan, <laughs> engine, uh, how, Afterwards, how? she will follow. Suga when I Satan, man. Satan, get away. Satan knows. If you understand authority or if you don't understand authority. Because we should treat them knowing what kind of authority that we have. We should tell the devil what to do and where to go. Right on the spot. Get out in the name of Jesus. Get out of my husband in the name of Jesus. Get out of leave my children in the name of Jesus. The devil will flee from you. Clap hands for Jesus Christ. So we have delegated authority. We have been given power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Are these snakes, are these literal scorpions? The answer is no. This is a, why? This is a type of devils. This is a type of demons, evil spirits. They are given power over them. As a believer in Christ, the individual believer, you have authority over them. Okay, let me read it from the message. I even like it more. It impresses me. He says in the message, still Luke chapter 10 verse 19, he says, see what I have given you. See what I've given you. In, in other words, he has given us. He says, safe passage. Say, 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 safe passage. He says, I've given you safe passage as you walk on snakes and scorpions and protection from every assault of the enemy. No one can put a hand on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In other words, no one shall harm you. Because ah. why? God has granted us authority over this type of devils, over these demons, over these evil spirits. And when I'm speaking about authority here, God himself is the force behind this authority. You remember that I said 
authority depends on the, or the value of authority depends on the force behind it or the force behind the user. God himself is the force behind this authority. And the believer who is thoroughly conscious of the divine power behind him and of his own authority can face the enemy without fear and without hesitancy. Hallelujah. 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 If you are thoroughly conscious of this authority or this divine power behind you and your own authority, you can face the enemy without fear. You can face him without hesitancy. Are you with me, church? Are you with me, church? You have this authority. Face him without any fear. To face him without any hesitancy. There's something that he says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. He says, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Why or how? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. What's the subject matter here? Who are them? You can see, eh? you see when you've read the preceding verses, he says them, he's speaking about demons. In other words, you have overcome demons and evil spirits. You have overcome them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because why? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now listen, power obtained by Jesus Christ through his overcoming the enemy belongs to the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Therefore, exercise that authority for it belongs to you. It belongs to you, as I'm what? keeping on saying. And you shall reign in this life through one, Jesus Christ. This is power that was obtained by our Lord Jesus Christ. By virtue of his overcoming the devil, the enemy. Now, in Matthew chapter 28, we read it, I think even last time. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. You will find something here that... We pick on, it says in verse 18 of Matthew chapter 28, Jesus says, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. He said, All authority is given unto me in heaven and earth. That's the word, or that's the manner in which it should be translated. All authority is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. In other words, Jesus immediately transferred authority to the church which is his body where is this authority now can i ask you church where is the authority now hmm? Hmm? in the church clap hands for yourself jesus immediately transferred the authority to the church why the church is his body he said, all authority is given unto me in heaven and earth. Whatever authority you can think of, it has been given to our Lord Jesus Christ. But what he did here, he mandated it to the church, immediately transferred it to his body. You will understand it very soon. He is the head, we are his body. Say Jesus is the head. Say we are the body. Say Jesus is the head. Point to your head, point to your head. Say Jesus is the head. Say we are the body. Say Jesus is the head. We are the body. In other words, he transferred it to his body. We are the church, we are his body. The authority has to be activated through his body here on earth. Matter of fact, church, we are the only authority that God has here on earth. The church is the only authority that God has here on planet earth. What does this mean? If the church doesn't do anything, things will not get done. You've got to understand it talking also personally, on a personal level. If you don't do things in your life. No one will do things for you. If you don't tell the devil to get out, no one will kick the devil for you. Jesus will not kick the devil for you. Your husband will not kick the devil for you. But praise God, maybe for the moment, your man of God will kick the devil for you. But actual fact, we have been given authority 
to exercise on behalf of the head, our head, Jesus Christ. That's why he said in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 22, he has put all things under his feet and has given him to be the head. Jesus is the head. Everything is under his feet. If Jesus is the head and everything is under his feet, who are we? Are we the body? Which means things are under our feet also. Clevens for yourself. If you read chapter 2, 5, and 6, it says, He has raised us up together and He has seated us together with Christ. It's in Ephesians chapter 2. Let me read it so that we get the emphasis. Chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. Even when we're dead in sins, has He quickened us together with Christ? By grace you are saved. And has raised us up together. Say, he has raised us up together. Say, he has raised us up together. And made us sit together in heaven places. Say, he has made us sit together. Say, he has made us sit together. In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Which places are these? We said these are places of authority. We are raised up together with him. We are seated together with him. He has put all things under his feet. And gave him to be the head of all things, even the church. It speaks that in the, in the book of him. It says, even the church. He has put all things under his feet, even the church. In other words, things are under the body of Christ, the church. We have got authority to exercise as children of God. Are you with me, church? Then in verse 19 of chapter 1, he speaks about the exceeding greatness of his power to us who to believe. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Still Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19. Paul is praying for them to know the exceeding greatness of his power to us what who believe. And now there's such a putting forth of the divine omnipotence of God's power through Jesus raising him from the dead. And that this is actually the mightiest work of God. In other words, when God raised Jesus from the dead, he was doing the mightiest of his works. This was a putting forth of the divine omnipotence of God's power through Jesus' resurrection. This is a mighty power. This was the mightiest work of God. Say power. Say power. Say power. And next to power, there will be authority. Now, all principalities, above all power, above all might, and above all dominions, and above every name that is mentioned in this world and in ages that is to come. That's where he put him. Now, listen, all these principalities, all these powers, all these mights, all these dominions, all these names that can be mentioned here and in the ages to come, they try, they endeavor to defeat the plan of God. But Christ arose and he ascended and is seated at the right hand of God. <inaudible> Irregardless of what they tried to do, they tried to wage war. They tried to fight. But the Bible says he made a public spectacle of them, God triumphing God. over them. <inaudible> In other words, Christ defeated them. They wanted to defeat God's plan, but Christ defeated them. And he arose. Say, he arose. Say, Christ arose. And he ascended. Say, Christ ascended. And he seated at the right hand of God. Now you will see something when this clicks or when this rings a bell, there's something that is going to light in your understanding. Now Satan's plans have been baffled. Satan's plan was overthrown. Jesus has been enthroned far above them. Far above all these powers, far above all these principalities, he has been enthroned above them. And is ruling with the authority of the Most High. And the source of this authority is found in his resurrection wow. and in his sitting by the right hand of God. Where is the source of this authority? It is in Jesus' resurrection. 
It is in Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father. He's sitting far above all principality, far above all power, far above all might and dominion. That's why the Spirit through Paul was praying that the church should see this. Where is Jesus seated, church? Hmm? Where is Jesus seated here? The Bible says he's seated at the right hand of the Father. And how is he seated? Far above. Say far above. Say far above. All principalities. All powers. All might. All dominion. Now is Jesus Super Vince. Jesus is supreme. He's above all. All things were created by him and for him. He says that in the book of Colossians. This is authority, church. I'll say this is authority. This is authority. Ah. And you can see that this authority is conferred not only to the head, but also to the body. It is conferred to the body and to the head. The head and the body are one. Say the head and the body are one. Say the head and the body are one. Now the Bible says you are raised up with him. We are seated together with him. Ephesians 2, 5 and 6. We are raised up with him. We are seated with him. In other words... If we are raised up with, with, with him, who God raised up when Jesus was raised up? We, we were raised up. Are, are you with me? Are you with me? We were raised up from our old life. That's the essence of water baptism. The Bible says we die with Christ and we are raised up in the newness of life together with him. You've got to be dipped inside the water. And you must be raised up in newness of life. That is a symbol. That is an ordinance. Say we're raised up together. Say I was raised up together. Say we were seated together. In other words, if the body is one and the head is one, Christ was raised up. We were raised up with him. We are seated up together with him. Because why? The head and the body are one. Can I ask a question? When you think of a person, do you think about his head or his body? Do you think about their head or their body or about the whole person? If you are thinking about, of, if you are thinking about your mother, do you think about your mother's head or your mother's body? Huh? If you are thinking about your child, do you think about the head of your child and the body or the body of your child or the whole person? Say the whole person. Say the whole person. Why? Because the head and the body are one. Christ is the head. We are his body. If the head has been conferred with authority, it means that the body has authority. Because it is through such body that this authority can be exercised. I tell you, church, we are Christ. The Bible teaches that we are Christ. As a body of Christ, we are Christ. We are in Christ. Are you with me? Clap your hands. Wow. I tell you what, when we realize that the authority or that the authority that belongs to Christ belongs also to the individual member of the body of Christ, our lives will be turned around. Our lives will be revolutionized. Because why? The authority that belongs to Christ belongs also to the individual member of the body of Christ. You have the same authority that Peter had. You, you have the same authority that Paul had. You have the same authority that Jesus had because he gave you the authority. Now, why are people having some results and others not? It's because some people know this truth. It has locked in them more than other people. And that's why I said it's acting on the knowledge that you know. It's only knowledge that is acted upon that will make people free. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 12, 12. Verse 12, for as 
the body is one and has many members. And all the members of that one body being many are one body. So also is Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, 12. Paul is calling the body which is the church Christ. We are Christ. As I'm saying, we are the body of Christ. Even verse 27 will emphasize that. It will say, now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. In other words, we are Christ. We are the body of Christ. Say, I am the body of Christ. Say, I am the body of Christ. Say, we are the body of Christ. Say, we are Christ on this earth. And that's why I said only one person can exercise this authority. It is his body. We are seated at the right hand of majesty on high. We are seated with Christ. All things have been set under our feet, under the church's feet. In other words, all things are there. Say, all things are under my feet. Say, all things are under my feet. Say, all things are under my feet. That's what David witnesses. David says, what is man that you are so mindful of him? You have made him to have glory and honor. You have set all things under his feet. Even David witnesses to this fact. We are seated at the right end of majesty. Do you believe that? We are seated with Christ. Because we were raised up with him. Do not stop at the cross. People are stopping at the cross. Kenneth Hagin says, too much cross religion is being preached. People are stopping at the cross. That message is not bad, but too much of it will cause people to stand on the cross. Because people thought this is where they belong. They think they belong at the cross, at the cross. We even sing those songs, I want to stay at the cross. At the cross of the cross, my burdens. Yes, let me stay on the cross. Let me just stay on the cross. And that's why people thought this is where or this is the place where they should stay. Actually, Jesus' resurrection is the place of triumph. Let us not stop at the cross. We have to move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say we have to move. Come by the cross. And let's go on to Pentecost. Other people reached Pentecost. They received the Holy Spirit. But then they reverted back to the cross. But I tell you, let us come by the cross. Let's go on to Pentecost. However, don't stop there. Come on up and be seated with Christ. Whereby in heavenly places. Now, wherever the head is seated, that's where the body is sitting. Am I right? Wherever the head is seated, that is exactly where the body is sitting. Okay, let me give an example. You are sitting here today. Is your body sitting here and your head sitting somewhere else there? Can you answer me? You are sitting here today. Where is your head? Is the head in the back corner? Huh? You are sitting on this chair and your head is seated on top of you. Clemens for Jesus Christ. And if the Bible says Christ is seated at the right hand of God on high, he made us to sit together with him. He raised us up together and he made us sit together. Where are we seated today? Where is the church seated today? Huh? Who can answer me? Where is the body of Christ seated today? The Bible says we are seated at the right hand of majesty on high. We are seated with Christ. Say you are seated with Christ. Say you are seated with Christ. Even if you don't know where we are sitting, just say you are seated with Christ because wherever the head is sitting, there is the body also. That's what he says in John 14. says, where I am, so shall my servant also be. Jesus is seated at the right hand of majesty on high. We are seated far above with him. He's seated at the right hand of the throne of God in the center of the power of the whole universe. And we are seated right there with 
him. Where are we seated? Where are we seated? We are seated at the right hand of the throne of God. That's the position the church should enjoy whilst it is here still on earth. We are seated in the center of the power of the whole universe. You remember the exceeding greatness of his power to us what we believe. We are seated right there with him. In other words, we have authority with Jesus. Authority is the exercising of the power of the throne that was committed to our ascended Lord is the authority to exercise the power of the throne that was committed to our ascended Lord. That authority belongs to you. I say that authority belongs to you. And we also know that Christ with his physical resurrected body is there. He's there in full possession of his rights. He ascended in his physical resurrected body. He is ascended. He is there. And he is waiting for the Father's time when all his enemies shall be made his footstool. I get this in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 13. We can read chapter 1 of Hebrews. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies a footstool or thine footstool? Listen, the angels don't enjoy the authority that we have in Christ. Listen very well. Even angels do not have this authority. Because angels are our servants. Are you with me? Are you with me? They, they have not yet ascended to the same level of authority that Christ has. But listen, we have this authority because we exercise it on Christ's behalf, as Christ has mandated us. But here you are, you are seated here, you are afraid of the devil. As if the devil will chase you Sunday to Sunday and, uh, and, and smoke you out. I was even thinking about the episode on Job. You know when the devil came to God and said, uh, who is Job? Uh, uh, you know, you, you, you've made a hedge around him. Can Job uh, save you for nothing? You remember that episode? And God said, look, there's no servant like him. I love him because he serves me well. And the devil asked God to try him. He wanted to test Job. He asked God for permission to do that. But listen, how stupid the devil is. He didn't even know that Job was under his power now. He took God to tell the devil, now behold, he is under your power. In other words, behold, stupid, he's under your power now. Because the devil is a stupid devil. But you've got to know that you've got this authority. When you realize that the authority that belongs to Christ belongs also to you as an individual member of the body of Christ, it will change your mind. Clemens for Jesus Christ. As I'm about to finish, I, want to, I just want to state and say this, we are made to share of his authority. We are made to sit with him. Say, I'm made to share of his authority. Say, we are made to share his authority. Say, we are made to sit with him. In other words, we are made to share his throne. We are made to partake of the authority that throne represents. Because a king is a king. Why? Because he partakes of that authority which the throne is seated upon represents. There's nothing like a king without authority. Why should he be called a king if he doesn't have authority? So, but here we are made to share in Jesus' throne. We are made to sit with him on the throne. We are made to share his authority. We are elevated to such a place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Clemens for Jesus Christ. God wants all of us to have spiritual understanding. So that we may exercise this authority. Over the powers of the air. Over the conditions that these powers are creating. 
They are creating these conditions by the ceaseless manipulation of the minds of men. You know, we once were going in this way, we were living according to the prince of the power of the air, the cause that we used to. But Christ has raised us up now. He has shifted us now. He has saved us by his grace. We are supposed to exercise authority over them, rule over them. Say, I have authority. Say, I have authority over all power, over all dominions. Say, I have authority to tremble on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Clap your hands, authority. You know, there's one man of God called John Alexander Dowie. He was preaching around the early 1900s. So one time in the church, a lady came with a mass of cancer on her face. And this cancer had grown to be the size of the actual head. It was big like a head. And the doctors brought this woman to the church, to the service where John Alexander Dow was preaching. And the only way they could treat this cancer in this woman, they could not give her a strong medication or poison to, 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 to kill this thing because this thing was internal. It was going to be poisonous. It would have killed her. So they were trying to treat it from the outside. Now what did Dawi do? Dawi, the man of God stretched his hand to this woman. In the name of Jesus, got hold of this cancer and he ripped it off the woman's face. Said in the name of Jesus Christ. Wow. The cancer fell off. And what remained there, it was like fresh and smooth, like baby skin. Immediately the woman was healed. Say authority. Say authority. Some people know how to exercise this authority better than others. Maybe it's because of knowledge acted upon. So most of us know or have heard about William Duma. Pastor William Duma was preaching down at KwaZulu Natal, Umgeni Road, around about 1940s, 1950s, 1960s, all those times going on. Early 70s and all. Now, William Duma was a mighty man of God. One day they brought a boy who had swallowed needles. I think he swallowed the needles, some of the needles, maybe through the skin, whatever. In fact, the needles were now in his vessels. They were going in his veins. The boy's name was Msomi. I don't know how he was playing with the needles, but the needles ended up flowing with his bloodstream. So men of God prayed for the boy. And listen, church, right there and there, when he was still praying for the boy, the needles sprang out of the skin of the boy from the vessel, blood vessels. They just popped out, pop, pop, of their own accord. Say authority. Say authority. Say authority. Say power. Say I have authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy. Clap your hands. You have this authority. You have it. Now. Every individual member of the body of Christ. You need to exercise it. You must know what you have. What? The devil doesn't want you to know this because he doesn't want you to enjoy the victory. He doesn't want you to know the reality of the actual things that God has lawfully given to you. But today, you shall know it. What? Hallelujah. It is too late for the devil. Satan is so I say it's too late for the devil. Satan is so the devil is no match for you. You are bigger than the devil. You will tell him where he should go, what he should do in your life. 
The Bible says, resist the devil. The devil will do what? He will flee. The devil will do what? He will flee. Say, I shall resist him. Say, I shall resist the devil in my family, in my children. The devil will flee, 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 flee. flee. Clap your hands. Hallelujah. Ah. I think we should stop here.